All right, so we're getting close to the spring market and everywhere you look on social media, there's some real estate agent offering to come to your home and do a free CMA, a free market analysis on your home. Well, what the heck is a market analysis? Well, we're gonna get into that today. Hey, what's up guys? It is your realtor, Nick Isgro with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. Now, as I just said, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty details of what exactly is the market analysis or the CMA, as a lot of agents will call it, that we're offering to do in your house for free. You see it online all the time. Well, what is it? What is the process to do that? We're gonna get into that right from start to finish. Now, before I do, I just wanna welcome you here to the channel. If you have not been on this channel before, we do cover all things real estate here in the state of Maine, particularly in the Central Maine market, if that's of interest, interest to you, if that's something that's going to add value to your process in the real estate world, please go ahead and give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, knock that little alarm bell, and you'll be notified every time we put out new videos. All right, so what is a CMA? Well, to start, let's talk about what it is not. A CMA is not an appraisal of your home. An appraisal is gonna be much more in tune, much more nitty gritty details of what's going on with your home. The market analysis of your home is gonna get into some details. We are gonna look over some things. We'll break it down as this video goes along. But essentially, it's a process that we're going through in order to determine the current market value of your home as you're getting ready to list your home for sale. So if you wanted to know, gee, if I was going to list my home right now, what would it be worth? This is the process that we in real estate go through in order to give you that number or at least give you a solid range. Remember, there's a little bit more art than science to this. As you would go along, you'll figure that out. Now stick around to the end of the video because there is a little bit of a tip that I want to give you at the end. Once you've heard what a CMA is and how we do it, that might help you in determining the realtor you work with or at least the price point that you end up at when you decide to list your home active for sale. All right, so let's break down the first step of doing a market analysis on your home. Let's say you've already spoken to the realtor, you've reached out, you've scheduled a time for them to come and see your home. You want to know roughly what your home is worth. Well, the first thing that we're going to do before we even show up your house is try to gather as much information as we can up front as possible. Now, when I talk to you on the phone, if you were to call me and ask me to do this, I would ask you a series of questions just so I can in advance gather some of that information. Like how many bedrooms do you have? How many bathrooms? Do you have a garage? Just some general details about the home so that I can get a good sense as I'm looking for other comparables when we do the analysis of how your home stacks up to what else I'm looking at. The other thing I'm going to do is pull the tax card from whatever city or town that you live in because the tax card is gonna give me a lot of the details that we need to know when we get to the ultimate time to decide how much per square foot we're going to price out your home for and come up with that final range. So on the tax card, some of the information that I'm going to get are things like exact acreage, the exact year that the home was built, the square footage, both upstairs, downstairs, and total square footage, it should say on the task card, whether it's finished or unfinished. Those might be some questions that we ask you on the phone too, but ultimately the tax card's going to give us those kinds of details so that we can get a general sense of what's going on with your home before we even show up. Once I have that information, we have the location and some of those details, I'm gonna be able to at least set up some rough comparables and get a general sense of the worth before I even show up at your home. So now we've gathered a lot of the upfront information. We've done some of the upfront groundwork. The next thing is we wanna show up and take a tour of your home. Now, the home tour is for a couple of things. One is so that the real estate agent can get some of the details that we're just not gonna find anywhere else. Like what are all of the different various flooring materials the counter materials and get a general sense of the condition of the home. Now, when I say a general sense of the condition of the home, I'm not talking about clutter and things like that. I'm talking about the physical condition of the home. So are all of the appliances working? Does it look like it's really worn down or has it been freshened up recently? What is the general wear and tear on the home? Those are details that we just really can't go to good sense of until we walk through. Remember, we walk through hundreds and hundreds of houses every year. We're looking through lots of homes homes here in your marketplace. My marketplace is here in Central Maine, but wherever you are, that realtor is gonna be able to have a good sense of really what your home looks like on the inside and how it stacks up to other homes that we're gonna be comparing to when we're trying to come up with the final analysis. Now, the second thing that the home tour is for is this is your chance to brag. And one of the things I always like to ask potential clients or clients about when I'm touring their home trying to do this is, 
what are some of the big things that you've done? What are some improvements that you've done that I might not see to the naked eye? What are some of the features that I might not catch just walking through that you really want me to pay attention to and zone in on? Because that's your chance to add value to this entire process. And assuming you're thinking about selling your home, you want to have as much value as possible. So this is really your chance to brag about all of the benefits and the features and the updates and the things that might not be readily apparent, but things that you want to point out to make sure that whatever real estate professional comes to your home, they're going to have that in mind and make sure they're taking notes on that. So when they go back to do the actual analysis, they can have all of that information in front of them. All right, so we've pulled the information, we've come in toward the home. The next thing we're going to do is go back and we're going to go on the MLS and pull some recent comparables. Now, when we're looking for comparables, what we're typically looking for is other homes that are generally close to where you are. If there's no comps in the physical area, you're gonna look for some place that's at least similar to the neighborhood in the area that your home is in. But generally within half a mile or a mile or so, we're going to be able to find some recent comparable sales. Now, every realtor does this a little bit differently. I tend to hone in on mostly very recent closed sales. I wanna know exactly what those homes have been actually selling for. Now, I do also try to look for something that's currently pending, although we don't know what that pending price has been negotiated to. We do know the list price, and I might throw in an active listing here and there just to get a general taste of where the market is going. But in general, I'm gonna focus mostly on closed sales, but also bring in some of that other information. You can talk to whatever realtor you're working with and see what their philosophy is on that, but that's how I do it. Now, depending on how easy it is to find those comparable sales, I like to always compare to five other homes. Now, I can do it with three. Sometimes I do do it with three because there might just not be a lot of comps out there on your particular home, but three to five other properties. And then we start to make the adjustments. This is where the realtor's work really comes in. So one of the things we're looking at is we're adjusting for square footage. We're gonna set a certain price per square foot and we're gonna make an adjustment to the price of those comparables. Because what we're trying to do is say, if these homes that we're comparing your home to were to be exactly like the home that you have, as far as square footage, features, benefits, garage, no garage, things like that, if we we're gonna make it exactly, so we're comparing apples to apples, what would the price of that home have sold for? So we're really leveling the playing field between the homes to try to get a price of what your home would be given those circumstances and conditions. A lot of the major things we're looking for, like square footage, whether you have a garage or not, and one of the things that I often look at here in Maine is acreage. You know, if you have a house that's on one acre, another house that's on two or three acres, probably not gonna make a big difference in price. If you have a house that's on one or two acres versus a house that has 50 acres, we wanna make an adjustment for that because that land definitely is adding value, particularly in the eyes of the buyers who are looking for that kind of a space. Now we also look at the condition of the home because one of the things that we wanna make adjustments for are improvements. You know, if one person has vinyl floors, another person has hardwood, that will make a difference in the value. If one person has Formica countertops, another person has granite, and that's going to make a difference. So we try to go through all of the photos on the homes that we're comparing and then put that against the notes that we've taken on your house and try to come up with some reasonable number of what we think that investment would be for or against the subject property. So once we've done that, we've gone through the home, we've gathered all of the information, we've looked at the home, we've compared to other homes, we've made all of the property adjustments to put all of these things on a level playing field where you're still gonna come out with some different pricing. Now what you're gonna find in a normal market is that these prices might be very similar, they might be all over the map, but you shouldn't have any major outliers. If I have one property that's just a major outlier, if I can't identify why I make an adjustment for it, I'm usually gonna dump that one off and stick with the group that's in that similar range. We're gonna take that we're gonna figure out what the cost is per square foot of those homes if we're gonna break it down so then we can figure out a good average cost per square foot of your home. Now that's gonna leave us with a range because all these prices are different, right? So oftentimes you're gonna have a high end of the range, a low end of the range, and then somewhere in the middle is where we're gonna often suggest a list price or at least that's kind of a starting point. Now I will say, I never go to a client and say, this is the price that you should list your home for. I always say, here's the range that I'm coming up with. Here are the comparables. Here's how I came up with these numbers. And here's where I think the sweet spot might be in this. Now here's the information you really wanna pay attention to. 
When we're looking at prices, we shouldn't just be looking at value. You really want a price strategy because some of the things that are gonna play into whether you're gonna go high on the range, low on the range, or somewhere in the middle of that pricing range has to do with whatever the current market conditions are. Have you had several months of a declining market, which means you're headed into a buyer's market? Are the prices rising like they have been for the last couple of years? Well, you might be more towards the high end there. At the end of the day, you don't wanna be trailing the market, but you don't wanna to be too ahead of the market either. What you want is a sweet spot where you are somewhat in front of the market, but also still showing some kind of value to the buyer because when buyers come to the home, they want to still see what they're looking at as a value to them. If it's too far out of whack, as far as being your price too high or too low, it's gonna raise a lot of red flags and it could cause them to not wanna come and see your home. But that's really it guys. That's the long and the short of how we do the market analysis. That's it really in a nutshell. It's not super complicated, but it is a, a process that we go through and it is one that you should understand when you're speaking to a realtor and trying to figure out how it is that they're coming up with the values because really it should be a team thing. You know, I always look at clients as part of the team. We're in this together and we're strategizing together. And in order for us to do that, you need to have the information available to you so that we're all in the same ballpark here playing the same game. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, what the goal always is for you, the seller, is to sell your home in the quickest amount of time we can at the highest price possible that we can. Now, there's a lot of variables in there depending on your home and depending on where you're landing there, but ultimately, you really want in the first 30 days to get that home sold if possible at the highest price possible because that's really where that's going to have and that's all comes down to the pricing strategy. All right, guys, that's really it. So if you are in the market right now, if you're a home seller or if you're a home buyer, even if you're looking at the prices and these are questions that are coming up with you because believe it or not, when we work with buyers and they want to put an offer on a home, we're running some usually down and dirty CMAs on those properties too because we want to make sure that our buyer clients are getting the value that they think they are at least if they're not if they're going way ahead of the market we want our buyers to know where that market value actually lies before they put their money on the line for it so whether you're a buyer or seller I hope this information has been valuable to you please go ahead and drop a comment below. I would love to know what your experience has been uh, working with realtors in the past, or just if you have any questions about this process, we can get into more details in the comments. I'd be happy to share that with you. Of course, as always, guys, again, my name is Nick Isgro. I'm with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. Please feel free to reach out anytime with any questions. That's what I'm here for. And until next week, I'll see you next time.